Hi, I'm Carrie, and uh, I'm here with my friend Kelly. Hello. And we just had a really interesting conversation. We did, and we like, listen, it could be the wine. It could be. It could be the wine. Could this be. could be like a really embarrassing recording tomorrow. I don't think that it is. I've I been don't... thinking about this for a while. Okay, so we decided to press record because we had this sort of conversation that it felt life-changing. It did, and I, to the point where I feel like we should mark this day. So it is July 31st. Yes, in the year of our Lord. It's 2016. 56 <laughs> on a Sunday right now. <laughs> yes. If you're listening to this in the morning, it's nighttime. Yeah. Getting ready for next week. And um, so I called Kelly because I have recently come to the conclusion that I will not be in the U.S. in 2017. Uh-huh. And I want to travel around. And I have a flexible job where I can work from home. So presumably I can work from anywhere. And why don't I work from anywhere? Yeah. When you can't work from anywhere, why, why don't you? Why wouldn't you? And but you know what? I'll tell you why not. And it's because the thing that's been happening for me is that I've really wanted to go to Charleston. I have this thing. It's like this book. Listen, don't judge me. There's this book I want to write. And I really want to go to Charleston to like get the vibe because it's supposed to be set there. And I love that I can work from anywhere. However, at the end of the day, you still have to have, like, have the money to go there. You know? And I started looking at how much is a flight. And then, like, how much is, like, a place, especially because I really wanted to go by myself. I don't have to, like, split it with anybody. And then I was realizing that, like, I was going to have to put that off for, like, a couple of months. And, like, literally, what is the point of living this way if then like, I'm still just as stuck as anybody else? Right. You might as well be in a cubicle if you're stuck at your house all the time. Yeah. And also, being stuck at your house all the time can be a little dark. It can. <laughs> when, you, when you work from home and you are just, like, living that yoga pants lifestyle yeah. where, like... Is, did you gain good. five pounds or did your clothes shrink in the dryer? You don't know. You don't know. And you know what? They're stretchy, so it'll work out. It's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. There's just slight <laughs> self-awareness, but never like, yeah. is this an issue? <laughs> Should I address it? Yeah. How many stains is too many stains <laughs> on the shirt? I don't I don't know, but I want to get out. I, and, and I've been thinking about this for, it's been about three years now that I've had 2017 as like, this is going to be the year that I see if I can do this remotely for a year entirely. And in the in the past year or so, I've worked from 10 different countries and not because I need to go there for work, although I work while I'm there. Uh-huh. I've just been kind of dipping my toe into the into the vagabonding water. Yeah. Like Tim Ferriss told me it would be okay. And come to find out like it is. It totally is okay, but I didn't do it solo. Like, when I went out to Europe, I met up with friends who were already out there, and we went to, like, six different countries in the span of, like, two months. My boyfriend flew out and met me in Paris, and then we did this whole, like, Paris, Amsterdam, Iceland thing, and that was very fun. But, like, I can do this permanently, but I can't do it by myself. And my boyfriend has a job that he has to actually physically go to. He and he gets his set amount of vacation every week and what I'm starting to realize is I don't want to be limited. Yeah. to that. And my life really isn't limited to that. Mhm. And it doesn't have to be. It would be really nice if I could get a traveling companion though. Yeah, cuz you can split the cost. Enter the call. Look at okay. it. it's your girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm. I feel like making a major life transition. Yeah. And uh, who else do I know? Who is allergic to commitment in a way that means that she can leave at any time? Who is the Thelma to my Louise? Yeah. Or the Louise to my Thelma? I'll take either. <laughs> Kelly was my first call. And so we had this conversation. And I feel like when we were having that conversation, that you were trying to like ease into it from like side. Which is amazing because I feel like I've really already in the last few weeks come to the decision that I wanted to do this. I think that's why this feels like so fortuitous and why we're like recording it. Right. Is it like I had just come to this conclusion and then here's Carrie calling me. And I feel like we had had like a few conversations this week that were like longer than our normal talk. Right. Well, I just got back. I just got back from my European trip like two months ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then – and I just feel like we were kind of having longer talks about things. Like, I couldn't quite get what you were getting at. And, like, today, I feel like as soon as you arrived on the point, I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I will go with you. Yeah, I was like, I didn't need all this. I, just... don't, I don't know where we're going. No, we don't know. We don't know what – when do you think so january 1st january 1st do you think that's our day yeah january 1st i mean we probably need like at least that much time right we do that gives us about like five months five months to figure oh there's still so much to think about though do you feel a little like a little nauseous i do i do but there's something so romantic (laughs) about just like on january 1st she got on a plane 2017 she got on a plane and she went somewhere yeah fuck you resolutioners look at us and then she stayed there for a month yeah because she like lived that resolution all the way to January. And then she picked up and moved to another place. Oh, yes. It was just as fabulous and beachy and warm. Maybe. I don't I, I would like to start out at a beach. I well, like in January weather. especially, although it might be a little more expensive. We'll have to figure all that out. I mean, I live in New Hampshire. You live in Ohio. Yeah. January is. January 1st. We're going to be wanting to, like, get the fuck out. Strip down. Get a tan. Well, I will... Don my beekeeper suit and <laughs> what? <laughs> you don don your beekeeper suit? That's what I need on the beach. Because <laughs> you're so pale and yeah. gingery. Yeah. <laughs> Who would be more? I I love it. Okay, so should we introduce ourselves? <laughs> oh, that might be good. <laughs> I feel like it's weird to talk about yourself though. How about how about if I introduce you and you introduce me? Okay, let's do it. Okay. I'll go, go first. I'll go first. So Carrie is the owner of the Content Factory, which is a digital PR agency. And I am an employee there. But we go back farther than that. We go way, we go way back. We do go way back. Yeah. And I think we're the kind of friends who are like instant best friends, I think, the second we met. Very true. And Carrie is... Oh, oh it's like, I don't know, girl. <laughs> That's what I love about you. No, Carrie is like one of the baddest bitches I know. She's a bad, bad, bad woman in the business world, which I really appreciate. I see it occasionally. I put on the mom jeans. Yeah. She, upright and locked. I've seen it. High and tight. High and tight. <laughs> High and tight with his mom jeans. Pleated front, a little bit of acid wash. Yeah. I'm here to talk to the manager. No, but Carrie is one of the most hardworking people I know, and she's also... But still one of the most fun, which is why, like, I feel like I spend so much time with Carrie. Because that's what we bonded over. It is. Because we really like to put in a full day's work and then go and fuck some shit up. (laughs) 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 What kind of life stories do we have? Some good ones. Yes. We really do. Um, But it's because we kind of throw ourselves into adventures. Yeah. So we've worked together, like, in a, like, a brief way. Wait, I need to tell everyone about you. Oh, shit. Okay. You already called me the baddest bitch in the game. Well, yes. But, like, that's actually how you pronounce Kelly Chase's name. Yeah. That's what, that's what Facebook says. <laughs> baddest so bitch true. in the game. It's absolutely true. <laughs> and I am. It is. Oh, <laughs> Kelly just oozes confidence, confidence, and just, you want to pull up your chair to her, her, like, conversation. And people do that. Like, Kelly just draws a crowd. <laughs> she is the social events coordinator for all of her friends and is the glue that holds so many things together, I think. Aw, thanks. I really think the world of you. I think the world of you. This is like such a love fest. I know. And that's... But we should get to business. Yes. Right? But I feel like a lot of our love for each other, I mean, we had our instant soul sister connection, but I feel like our we've gone on workations together before. We have. And I feel like we've bonded a lot in those situations. So Kelly and I have gone on two international workations together and we just spent some time together in ohio yeah Yeah. tell me that akron ohio was not a blast even though you basically only saw the mustard seed literally the second best time other than scranton yeah scranton has a lot to offer scranton's a party town (laughs) (laughs) i have i have a courtyard marriott inn that i would highly recommend if you ever find yourself traveling through scranton but um, I, I've been into this workation thing for a while, and workation to me, and we've actually outlined what workationing means to us, mm-hmm. and I, th- I think we'll get to that in a minute. But shorthand, it's you've got to work, but you want to be in a place that's like, if you're working your ass off, 
You should probably like smell some salty ocean air. Totally. Like I don't think the workation thing, it's like it's not a vacation from work. No. It's if anything, it's more work. But I feel like the way that you and I work, we really throw oursel- ourselves full tilt towards something. And we just run at it as hard as we can. But like bitch, you need to go to the beach after that. You like there's <laughs> some self-care involved. There is. And, and it it is self-care to me in a way because I put in a lot of hours every week, like 60 minimum. Yeah. I am always up and working before 7 a.m. because it's really nice to have a couple of uninterrupted work hours done to start your day with. Right. And then people get to start hitting me with questions and calling me and, you know, yeah. I get the Slack messages and like somebody wants to Skype me randomly and uh, I don't have time for that right now. Yeah. I, have to, I have to make time. And so, like, I have this time that I don't have otherwise when I'm working early in the morning. And when I was out in Europe, I was six hours ahead of my team mm-hmm. and my clients on the East Coast. On the West Coast, it was plus nine. But most of our clients and most of my employees are on the East Coast or on EST at least. Right. So – Being six hours ahead was like, not only could I sleep in until like 8.30 in the morning if I want to, right? Oh, I'm... Get naughty. I'm going to be a bad girl. Yeah. Sleep in until 8.45. But I I could do it. I could get away with it and like... She's bad. I did. I was so bad. (laughs) Sleeping in until 8.30. But then I still was... So minus minus six, that's 2.30 in the morning. Mm Mm-hmm. So I got to wake up, write some blog posts, do my industry reading, like shower. Right. So we should probably go that way and not. Well, not the other way, because I've we also workationed in Mexico and that was minus one. Right? Mm-hmm. Minus one from the team, I think. Yeah. One hour. And that puts you behind. Yeah. And when you're behind you always feel like you're playing catch up and for me like I I would never want to go more than plus six like the people who go to Bali and the people who yeah I don't think we can do that realistically no because I can't be 12 hours ahead of my team I don't I really don't want to be answering client calls at three in the morning that sounds like misery yeah I don't want to do that so like I think that we can set this up in a way where we are going to different places and staying within a reasonable time zone advantage if you're plus you know plus three i think is the ideal which is what portugal and spain the caribbean's plus one yeah so i don't, we'll have to look into our options but basically i called kelly and said hey you want to go on this adventure with me work through the process in 2017 yeah and i could not say yes fast enough I'm like very excited about this. I, do you think, to... I mean, what do you think this looks like money wise, though? I've been looking into it. So and we've done this in the past. Right. And number one, I need to stop paying rent. I, I live with my boyfriend. If I move out mm-hmm. to go live elsewhere for a year, bounce around places and that like saves me the rent money. But yeah. then I'm going to have storage costs because I'm going to what I can't sell, I need to store, and do I even want to sell everything anyway? Like, I I have to get rid of my cat. You've got oh, a cat, too. Cooter, chicken. Cooter and chicken. I have, and I have, like, a real sick relationship with chicken. Like, we're real close. So, I mean, but, but your question was, like, monetary. Looking at it, Kelly, we can stay in some, like, sick-ass places. Like, Airbnbs, we each get our own bathroom, our own bedrooms, and I think that that should be the rule. Like, We should each have our own bedroom, each have our own bathroom, no matter where we stay. Totally. If we have to share a bathroom, there should at least be something else pimp about it. Like a private pool or something. Yeah, like definitely like a pool or a jacuzzi or like. And some sort of X factor to make up for the fact that like. We've never been in a place where we've had to share. When we were in the Dominican Republic, we had an excess of bathrooms. We had so many bathrooms. (laughs) We had so many bathrooms. I didn't even use that one. And Nobody did. We had guests that, like, did Wait, they even use the bathroom? I don't know what they did. did. I don't know. But so we had our own bedrooms and bathrooms there. And in Mexico, it was a little bit of a different situation. You shared a bathroom with Elena. Yeah. When you were out there. But that was like. That was totally fine. And they ha- we had a pool and hot tub there. We did. 
and beach ass xx and beach x which is kind of important so like i've been looking at these places and like for 16 to 1800 dollars a month if we split it two ways i don't know what you're paying in rent i'm like right about 750 then it, it, but you're also paying for utilities too right yeah i pay electric on top of that because um and then there's like internet costs and you know whatever but like the great thing about airbnbs is that it's like completely it's like all inclusive all inclusive yeah minus food yeah and i mean we pulled up some places and and looked before we decided to even like click record on this conversation right there were some pretty great places for like 1500 a month if we wanted to stick at that budget airfare you're gonna need to factor in airfare well that shouldn't be as bad though because i'm gonna be able to give up some things like like i think i'm gonna sell my car and then I wouldn't have to pay insurance. That's a really good point. I can't get out of my car. Like, I, I have a lease. I love my car. Yeah, and you can't drop the insurance, really. No, and there's going to be some times when I have to come back to the States for business. Like, I, I have an annual meeting with one of TCF's clients, and I go out there every year. To see yeah, you can't miss that. Live tweet from gay pride parades. And then <laughs> <laughs> right. tell them about the fabulous life. The progress we, we've made and see if they'll sign another contract. And so far, so good, right? But I have to do that. And then there are a couple of other like conferences and things that I need to come back for. A couple of client meetings. But we have international clients too. And I have to go out for those client meetings too. Right. Well, I mean, what if we kept it at like 750 a month for. The Airbnb, what is like, and then like, what if it was like a thousand dollars with airline also, like for our flights also? I think we should look into it more, and then I, I think it's totally doable. I like, given the cursory research that I've done, given the experiences that I've had with. Once you're in Europe, it's like fifty bucks, a hundred bucks to fly like anywhere else in Europe, like a plane ticket from Portugal to Germany. I think it was like $52. Right. Well, it's crazy. We, but if we budgeted for like $1,000 a month, then that means we could spend a little more on the flights, the big flights, like right. flying over to Europe. Right. Which is probably going to be more. But I think we can do more research and, and nail that down. Yeah. Um, should we talk about the rules that we've outlined? Yes. I'm excited about the rules. Are you excited about the rules? Yeah. It's like a framework to operate within. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it a lot. It's really important to me that we do this intentionally and maybe we should get into like the conversation that we just had about realizing. So I knew that your dad died. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I knew you lost your mom, but I don't think we really put together. I think necessarily number one, how similar those situations were. We were both in our early twenties. Yep. Um, we were both, we lost them both to cancer. Yep. It was pretty sudden and traumatic mm -hmm. the way that it happened. It wasn't like a long lingering situation. No, it was not. And... I think that it had a really deep impact on both of us. Oh, it profoundly impacted both of us. Yeah, like I was remembering, I mean, this is so on the nose that it almost feels like a made up story, but like this really is what happened. So my my dad, when I, I was with my dad, I was the only person who was with my dad when he got the call from the doctor to say that he was terminal. And that was a really, really, really hard conversation to have, obviously. And then I was just sitting there with my dad and he told me what the doctor said. And we sat there, and I remember we just sat there in the living room across from each other, and we both just cried. And I, all I wanted in the world was to, like, find something to say to my dad that would make it better. But, like, that's the one thing that, like, you can't make better, no. you know? And I was just like, well, you know, what should we do? Is there is there anywhere you want to go? And my dad just said, everywhere I've never been. Which is really beautiful. I mean, it's sad. It's extra it's so sad. super sad. It, it slaps you in the face with sadness and your own mortality when you find out that your parent is sick, you recognize that, like, this death is going to happen, and then the death happens, and you're just completely overcome with grief and anger, and, like, grief does weird things to you. Yeah. And it put me in a really dark place until I was, like, 24, 25. No, my, like, my early 20s were, like, a complete waste as a result of that whole situation it was, it, it was really really tough and life is so fragile and it's fleeting and it my mom only had until 42 so yeah. now my question is like what if i only have until 42 mm. i'm in my late 27s right now yeah mid to late mid to late 27s. give yourself that mid <laughs> <laughs> 
And at some point, I'm going to have to, like, suck it up and turn 28 or 29. I mean, like, 30, I think, is still at least four years away. At least, by my counting. <laughs> by my counting. <laughs> We've got some time. But realistically, we don't know how much time we have. And my mom, when my mom died, and I got to a place where I could, like, fully reflect on it and what it means and the tragedy of it all, because the tragedy isn't just in death. The tragedy to me became the life that was unlived because my mom for a variety of reasons although she was really smart and really capable and had so much potential due to her life choices she ended up feeling really stuck and she stayed stuck and as a result she never was able to accomplish the things that she wanted to do and that she had my mom was a sassy lady and she could have had really anything, but she never chased it hard enough. And it's sad. To, it really breaks my heart Yeah. to say that. And it's sad to recognize. But once I recognized that, and that to me became the tragedy. It wasn't, it wasn't just her death. It was, I don't know, it's, it's cheesy to say, like, the life unlived. Yeah. But I don't want that. Like, I cannot, I won't abide by it. Like, no. <laughs> I have no. a life to live, and I'm going to do it. And what does that mean for me? what do I really want? And I started asking myself these questions in like my, my actual mid twenties. Yeah. And then I started the agency and I honed my craft and I worked toward it. And I'm now able to, I've engineered this life for myself that is purposely untethered. We all work from home. Yeah. I have like a dozen employees spread out over seven different States and we all work from home or wherever. And I've set that up intentionally because I like to travel and I could do it. And we work and live in an internet age and more things are possible than ever before. And like so few people take advantage yeah, of the opportunities that are. Well, and I think a lot of people are putting off, putting it off to another time or they're, you know, the thing with my dad was, is that, I mean, my dad had like a different story. He came from a really rough background, but then like he became a doctor kind of later in life and like really turned it around and. Um, but he had worked so hard for so long for the whole time I had been alive. And then he was finally getting to the point where that was starting to pay off for him. And that like, he actually would have gotten to do the traveling that he wanted to do. And then he got Mm. sick. Right. And then he was gone really quickly. And so like, I want to run really hard towards the opportunities that I have now. I want to be working really, really, really hard because like, I believe in the stuff that we're working on. And like, I believe in myself and I really want to be working on that stuff really hard. But I also don't want that to mean that I'm not chasing after everything else that I want to. But there are only so many hours in the day. And so how do you like marry these things? And I think that the answer to that question is to live as intentionally as possible. Yeah. And I think that that's, that brings us to like the rules of vocationing because in having this conversation with each other, we were like, all right, well, what does this mean? Well, what do we really want out of this? Yeah, we don't want to just go fuck around. No. I mean, like, we can go fuck around too, but... Yeah, but that's not, like, the point. No, no, the point is, so what do we want to do? We want to, like, cross things off of our bucket list. Yes. Like that means, like, we to have to make a bucket list. And I have, I have loosely outlined. I've got some things I want to do. I've got some material. Yeah, all right. No, but we should really think about all of the things that we want to do. And we should find a bucket list item in each country we go to. We should. I think, well, that's, yes. We should definitely cross off something from the bucket list every new place that we go. And, like, try new foods and really throw ourselves into the culture. Because how do I even know that, like, New Hampshire is the place for me? And I, you know, I grew up in California. I went to Pittsburgh. Kelly and I met, we met in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I ended up in New Hampshire. And I love New Hampshire. But, like, I really want to love where I live. And the only way to know for sure that you love where you live is to go other places. There are other advantages to travel too, but. Yeah, no, sometimes I think about the fact that I live where I live in Akron, Ohio, and my parents grew up here, and they grew up here because their parents grew up here. Right. And then on both sides of my family, people settled in this very river valley (laughs) in like the early 1800s. And like here I sit, in my shithole apartment (laughs) you know and for what because people who are a hell of a lot braver than me came here a long time ago and no one decided to leave 
Like well, you don't need to leave permanently. No, and I could come back. But I want to know that I live here because I li- I wanted to. Right. And not because it was just because where where be. inertia became the heaviest. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? It's absolutely true. So we've outlined some rules of vacationing. Yes. And so far we only have four. This, li- this list might expand. Yeah. But the number one rule of vacationing, as we've outlined it, is you must make more money than you spent. I think that's so important, don't you? I'm trying to get wealthy. Yeah. I'm I not trying. I'm if I'm spending more money than I'm making. No, and you know what? You can't have freedom or flexibility if you're spending more money than you're making. No. Like, real freedom is making more than you spend. And I think that that's doable. Yeah. Given what I've seen so far. Like, I think that I I know how much you make. I know how much I make. Right. I think that we can make this work. So making more money than we spend, number one. Yes. Number two, which kind of helps with number one, is you have to travel light. Yes, because it's cheaper to fly a lot of times, like on the budget airlines especially. They'll let you get a cheaper ticket if you're only having a carry-on. Well, an international carry-on, the sizes are smaller Yeah. than U.S. carry-on. Right. Like that. Well, and also, like, who knows what's going to happen. We might end up in a situation where we have to walk or something. Like, we don't. Can I tell you that it, so at the Gay Pride Parade Uh in San Diego this year, I went there right from Vegas because I was coming from a, oh, right. a different conference, right? And I've got my carry-on. I tested myself out on this in, well, earlier this year when I went out to Europe. I spent two months in Europe. I went to a bunch of different places, and I did all of it in a carry-on with a personal item. And I packed curling irons, packed my blow dryer with the round brush. I had outfits and shoe options, and I was very careful about what I packed into that tiny, tiny little suitcase. But I'll tell you what, I was really, really happy that I opted for the smaller suitcase when I found out the elevator was broken to the Airbnb in Berlin and it was a five floor walk up. Oh my gosh. I would have been dragging like a 50 pound giant suitcase up five floors of steps and like, I don't even crossfit. I'm right. Not I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> Mm-mm. And I had to do something similar. So um, in San Diego, got off of the plane from Vegas into San Diego, went right to the Gay Pride Parade. And I was on a timeline. I had to get there. But all the streets were closed. And the Uber driver didn't know where she was going. And she just kind of, like, dropped me off in the vicinity and was like. She's like, it's looking pretty gay over here. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck Good on your you. journey. Yeah. <laughs> you have fun. Well. Over a mile later, literally, it was over a mile later because I was chasing a moving target. Oh, right, because the float was, like, on the move. I mean, yes. Yeah, it hadn't hit the – I got there in time, and, you know, I was meeting a couple other employees down there. I wasn't, like, mission critical, and I was still early. But I'll tell you what, I was sweating from dragging my suitcase – through the cracked, broken sidewalks of San yeah. Diego, strewn with all kinds of gay pride parade litter, which, you know. Right. I mean, I'm compelled that we should do this. I I am looking around my apartment, though, at all of these clothes. You can do it. You can shrink it into a carry-on. If you can do it, I can do it. I, You know I have hair problems. It takes me like a minute to tame this man. I know. I feel like I have 80 carry-ons worth of clothes in front of me, though. Time to clean house. It is. Like, who really needs this many clothes? Well, and, and so, second rule, you m- must travel light. The third rule, you must focus on and stay in one place long enough to accomplish a goal. And I feel like this is just as important as number one. Like, number two. Yeah. Go crazy. Carry a big bag. Lug that shit around. That's its own punishment. You're, right. <laughs> you're going to find out the hard way on that one if you don't travel light. But um, making more money than you spend mission critical you must focus on and stay in one place long enough to achieve a goal that's really important too if you're only going somewhere for like three to even seven days at a time you feel like you need to go out and like take in the city yeah like every day i mean otherwise you're you're not being you you're not what, like what's enough. even the point of being there right you can stay in a work hole in scranton for three days been there done that right it was actually really good but like, there was nothing to see in Scranton. I didn't mind doing that. If I were in Paris, 
or, you know, I don't know, insert swanky city here. Any city, really. Right, and we need to be somewhere long enough that we can hole up for a few days when we need to. Because sometimes with our work, we do just need to really scroll up for a few days. Mm -hmm. But we we still want to be able to do all the cool stuff there. Right, which means you you really got to stay there for at least two weeks. Well, and it looks like Airbnb will give us, like, discounts a lot of the time if you stay for a month. Some of them are, like, 60%. I mean, that's crazy. But so, I mean, like I'm looking so at it'll cost less insane. money, too, for us to stay. And also, that's less plane tickets, so you're not moving every five seconds. Right. Well, and that's more of an expense. And air travel really takes it out of you. Like, it does. Like, I, you need a little, a little bit of time, especially you need when like you're a going. Day to recover. Well, especially when you're going, like, multiple time zones. Yes. Yeah. Because that can be rough. The last rule of vacationing. Don't talk about vacationing. No. <laughs> no, we can make that rule five if you yeah. want. We're looking for rule five. Well, we're talking about it right now. Uh, four, <laughs> road karma is a thing, and you should always keep it positive. Yeah, I think that's super important. I feel like we usually do. I feel like we're usually, like, on a trip, sort of, like, who are our new friends? Where are you? Reveal yourselves. You know what I think is the new golden rule? Hmm. So there's, like, treat others how you want to be treated or whatever. But Dan Savage – the like mm-hmm. sex and relationship. I love Dan yeah, Savage. I love Dan Savage too. Uh, he has this thing called the campsite rule, and it's specifically in the context of like May December relationships, where one person is like significantly older than the other. And he says that as long as you follow the campsite rule, it doesn't have to be skeezy, right? And the campsite rule is you have to leave people better than you found them. So if you're dating somebody who's like 15 years younger than you are, that's not bad. But it is if you left them worse than you found them. Yeah. It's like taking advantage of people or whatever. But I try and do that with everyone. Yeah. Like, it doesn't cost you anything extra to, like, be nice to people or to compliment a bad bitch rocking a killer outfit. Which we do, usually. Oh, I love it. (laughs) They need to know. Yes, they do. And they need to hear it from a lady who's not, like, creeping on them. It's not like some construction worker catcalling and whatever. There's, like, a classy way to compliment. Totally. And it, it's so not intimidating coming from another lady. Then it's like, oh, game recognizes game. Yes. So road karma is a thing. You can sprinkle positive karma everywhere you go. Totally. And you should do that because there's nothing like travel to, like, make you realize that overall people are good. Yeah, I think that they really are. And I think it's better to approach it that way, right? You have to be trusting. Like, traveling is, like, a very trust-based endeavor. Coming from fear is not, I mean, right. there's nothing empowering about fear. Like, you should definitely have a healthy dose of fear, but fear prevents you from accomplishing a lot of things. Yeah. Or it can. Or doing totally. a lot of things. Like, how many women don't go to the beach and rock a swimsuit at the beach where it's totally appropriate because they don't, they fear what other people are going to think about their bodies. That's yeah. The thing. And they don't need to. They no. really don't. Do you know what you need to have a bikini body? Just a bikini on that body. It's so true. You just listen. Take it to the beach. You know me. <laughs> I will just spread these thighs out <laughs> all over the beach. And everyone can just behold. And you know what? They can either love it or they can stay mad. It doesn't matter. Because like, I do not care. No, you shouldn't like live your life. Based on the fear of what happens if you do something. I mean, like, definitely risk mitigation is the thing. And they're, I'm not saying to not be afraid of anything. But there are so many things that people are afraid of that they don't need to be. Yeah. And, like, I have this thing that I want to do. I want to travel around the world and, like, make the most of my life. I mean, my mom tells me I might only have 42 years. Yeah. So, like, how much time is left? I don't even know. I want to do as much as possible. Totally. So are we... We're, we're going to do this, right? Are so we've we agreed this? we're going to do this. Is five months going to be enough? I mean, it'll be enough time, right? Five months? Hmm. What do we really need to do? <sighs> we've got cats to consider. Um, all of the shit that I own. Can fit into some size box. Yeah. I need to sell my car. I need to get somebody to take my car. I need to figure out, like, a mail situation. We're going to need, like, international health care. Cell phones. Ah. Uh, And we have to make sure we have Wi-Fi wherever we go, like, absolutely. Oh, yeah, we need that. And, like, we need an alternative in case. A backup. We need a plan B. Yeah. We've got needs. We can figure this out. We've done this before. This is not like – we've had dry runs of this. I mean, this is a lot, though. We're talking about living out of a carry-on for 
for a year. year. That's intense. And like I wouldn't describe myself as high maintenance. But no, I'm I think we're pretty low lo- maintenance. I can be. I'm not my best self at my low maintenance self. Yeah. I think this is a right decision. I, I put a lot of thought into this and I've been thinking about it for years. Although it might not seem I know it seems very impulsive because I'm like, hey Kelly, in five months, do you wanna like dip out on your life and go travel the world with me? But like at the end of the day, hey Kelly, in five months, do you wanna like keep your job? Still work real hard. Travel the world and see some shit you've never seen before. I mean, yeah. I do, too. You know what I've never done? Hmm. I've never held a monkey. Oh, I've, and you've spoken of this before. You have a need. <laughs> oh, monkeys. I mean, they look like little people. Yes. They've got full-on opposable thumbs. This is where we came from. <laughs> yeah. They're but for the grace of God. Yeah. I need to hold one, look it in its little monkey eyes, I need to have that experience. Yeah. I might cry. I might literally cry while holding a monkey. I support this. I support this. I hear koalas have chlamydia. I'm less excited to hold a koala. They're just, they have it all over them. Just lousy with all of them. Yeah. Secreting chlamydia. Just lousy. From oh, their hair? They're oozing it. I don't know. I think like if you even just hold one, you can get chlamydia. You gotta like wash your hands real good before you touch a hoo-ha. I'll, I'll stay with a chlamydia-free monkey. I, I want to do all of these things. I want to jump off of a yacht into an ocean. Yes. I see that on reality TV sometimes, and I'm always like, mm, well, that looks, looks like good. It, I'll have that. Yeah, I do. I agree. So where are we going to go? I, I mean, like, I don't think that this is a question that we can answer right now. We've got to dig into it. Like, there are options. I think that it's smart to go somewhere warm in the winter. I do, too. I look good with a tan. I can, can't get one, but I look I look fluorescent in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... We still need to figure out where we're going to go. Yes. But let's figure out where we're going to go, and then I guess... We'll, like, check back in? And we'll take the next or we'll Or we will have sobered up and decided this was a terrible idea. <laughs> Could be. I think... I don't know. I only... I think there's, like, a 20% chance upon sober reflection. Yeah. I'd be like, let's, well, let's crazy. Let's see what tomorrow Kelly and Carrie have to say. Okay. All right. We're going to do it. I think we're going to do it. I think we might. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm I know. Like, Jesse Spano excited and scared. She's... Just all in one jet yeah. on repeat right now. Yeah, I'm going to go stressy and like cry a little. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Okay. All right. Bye, girl. Bye.